Um, okay. Hey, uh, I think we are ready on the chat. Okay, cool. Uh, I will just put my camera as well. Uh, yeah, all good. Uh, do we wait for people or we are starting? Uh, I think Should we can start if you wish. Okay, uh, I think it's fine. Uh, I have presentation, so uh, even if someone will join in the middle, uh, should be okay. So, um, Hey, uh, my name is Claudia. I will be doing the workshop about types of motions, burdens, and effective prep time. Um, it's basically the uh, idea why I agreed to, to make this topic and only important. It's I was stucking for like two years when I was debating and I didn't know what to do better and also like um, how to win the rooms or like why the prep time is so necessarily. And then I had the chance to speak with better and more experienced partners, which point out a lot of mistakes and a lot of my uh, thinking of the debate, while this is not only listing arguments or listing the amount of actors, but this is the game when you need to fulfill certain expectations, which are set by the CAs in the motion and which are verified by the people, by the judges in the panel, which means that you need to consider a lot of different factors and that's also impact how your case is received. Because you are not only judged on what idea you had in the debate, but on the delivery of your case and also how people perceive this and take this as granted, right? Therefore, um, I think um, this will be very basic structure of this workshop, right? So, um, First of all, the resources which I used in the presentation are basically the Athens UDC judging and speaking manual, which you see exact quotes from this and what kind of and based on the experience as a speaker and on feedback which I received from many, many people. Second of all, the personal experience which I had, the amount of mistakes which uh, I made and like, Oh, the screen is not shared. Let me a uh, second. Uh, uh, can you see uh, screen now? Yes. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Uh, I will just put that to... So uh, resources, Athens UDC judging and speaking manual, uh, personal experience, um, which I take as a speaker, judge, or um, just by talking with people, and knowledge gained from available workshops and written um, materials. Therefore, this is not the things which I created, but which was also delivered to me uh, by other people, which means that you can find a lot of useful resources if you know where you should look and on the YouTube. Table of content of this presentation. So I will start to explain the, the importance of prep, the difference, then information from judging manual per se, uh, then useful tips to all types of the motion, and then types of motion, policy analysis, actor motions, and summary slide, which is sum up all of this information, how to make this prep time uh, in the most effective way. Meaning of prep time, uh, I think this is crucial, right? So. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, I don't know what's going on because every time when I'm sharing my screen, it's... Uh... Uh, are you seeing this screen with table of content now? Uh, yeah, okay, cool. Perfectly. So now it's all good. Um, here. There we go. Um, so let's start with importance of prep time, right? 
you can't win debate on prep, but you can increase your chances of winning by checking your clarity, ideas, understanding of the motion with your partner. Uh, I made an experiment once on one of the Polish Academy with workshop. So I put two speakers uh, back to back on the chair and they can't speak to, uh, firstly, I put uh, people uh, together but they can't speak to each other for 15 minutes, which we called silence prep, right? So you can use paper, you can use like gestures, the same as you are using in the debate in the middle, right? And then I put people back to back and gave the questions to both speakers, to DPM, to PM, to LO, to DLO. And I was like, what is the main point of your partner? How you define this or ask, second speaker to explain some kind of cases which they made agreement and if that was something which you had in your head. Unfortunately, a lot of ideas were not reflecting what both people wanted, right? Therefore, I think speaking is extremely important because you can check with your partner if you have the same clarity as you want to receive to the panel, to the judges, right? You can check how it's the, the best effective way to deliver this. Therefore, it's not important, actually, how you structure your prep, which things you will do in a particular way, or if you're preferring, like, you need to spend amount of time or talking because you will not have the same chance again, especially at worlds, at euros, which are not online, when you can walk in between the buildings and you are OG in the building when you need to go seven minutes and you probably will be incapable to writing something right so you need to be prepared to talk a lot with your partner to understand each other and also to weaponize this time as in a mass right but second of all i think which is even more important you can understand your uh content and your own material much better than panel than other speakers in the room but your partner can be small sample of average voter, right? Because you probably didn't have exactly the same idea in your head, which means that you might check if you are going on the same on the same idea and, uh, and also if you define the same things in the same way, right? Because a lot of teams, when they are starting, especially in OG, but also OO or CG or CO, it's saying, yeah, so therefore we will have amazing increasing of happiness in, in, the, in the society. Or yeah, for etc but people didn't think by particular words and also you can see that by case by case right when when first speaker said some general things opening opposition or like closing opposition respond based on non-clarity and picking some cherry examples and showing why that might be problematic and then second speaker came with completely different definition this is important on prep to be sure what is the strategy and how we will build other cases Therefore, the meaning of prep time is to weaponize this 15 minutes as much talking as possible and as much information as you can get from the small sample to the people which you will be applying in a 15 minutes and you want to convince them to your idea. Uh, judging manual quotes. And here is the case. Um, let me minimize this. So teams win debates by being persuasive with respect to the burdens with their side of the debates that attempting to prove within the constraints set by the rules of VP debating. The issue is you need to be persuasive, but also respect the burdens to your rules, right? Therefore, if you know what people expecting you to do, which are probably the burdens set by the motion, it's not only that you need to tell the best plausible story, but the story need to fulfill certain criteria for you to be successful, right? And this is something which all of the judges should, should go and should follow. Therefore, I think the speakers should also structure to some extent their prep to, full, to be sure that you at least mark this or you at least think about this particular issue, right? The second question is assessing the arguments, right? The outcome of the debate should depend on what the team said. Judges must not intervene in the debate. Do not invent arguments for teams. Do not complete arguments arguments and do not rebut arguments. Many, many times people on prep are saying, yeah, and then we will run the agency case, then we will run the self-defense case, and then this is obvious what is the outcome of this case, right? The problem is, 
that judges and people in the room can have completely different perception on what is this obvious thing for you or how the bad things happen or all their basic understanding of the motion especially when you have like five people in the panel five people coming from different backgrounds five people have different experience and the different circles therefore even if for you some kind of situation it's obvious because you are see, seeing that outside of your window or you have a lot of experience because you run this case already that doesn't mean that people will complete this argument or will complete your your thoughts in the same way as you want them to do this right therefore you are responsible to control the message and to control how people will receive your argument and what they, how they will understand this. This is a very similar analogy to the TV series fan base, right? When you have some kind of last episode in particular series, then you have like thousand people discussing in the forum, what does it mean, how we should perceive this, um, what this actor do or like why, why that was the case, right? Therefore, if you have like five people in the panel, if you did if you just left things by obvious or like asserting that people will understand this, you are very vulnerable for a attacked from that they will find some kind of example which is not foreseeing your potential objective things or like your obvious things and will weaponize that against your case, which might be also persuasive to some extent. But also, every judge in the panel will came and draw a different conclusion from your line. Therefore, they can also assess that to different metrics, right? Which means that on your prep time, you should be you should be um, certain what is the end up goal of your argument, and what is the effect which you want to achieve. You need to try to measure this. You need to try to present the size. You need to try to assert who will be impacted or why people will will go in the particular way, right? Therefore, you will receive the credits which you want. I think the delivery is extremely important, and especially this is something which is judged in the room and which is judged in particular panels. Uh, next is we should not consider how important we think a particular argument is in the abstract, but rather how important it became in the particular debate. This is literally the quote from the judging manual. What does it mean? That mean that if I'm sitting and judging the motion after people deliver the argument, I need to be sure what is the motion which I'm judging. That this is not the same motion which was said in the tournament two weeks ago, that this is not the motion which I can copy paste the argument from the speaker and use that in my case file to any singular one, right? Therefore, you need to be sure that you are also specific, that you are not only explaining why freedom of choice is important, you are not only explaining why self-defense is important, you are not only explaining a particular case, but in the relation to the wording in the motion and to, to, to the particular phrase, right? It's literally problematic when people heard successful case somewhere in some of the debate, and then when you see the motion, you are not even reading the, the word by word, but you're seeing, ah, this is the motion about feminist movement, I know what to run, or this is the motion about uh, companies, so I know what will be the case. The case needs to be specific and deliver in particular debate and linked why we should care about that in this moment and not in general in debate terms and why you go in with this uh, here, right? But also, I think in the real world, that's mean certain plausibility that we should be capable to see people outside of the window or like people in our society behaving like you describing or the mechanism which you are using right which i think it's also uh kind of important in that term but i will be talking about that a little bit later uh next i think this is also explanation how persuasion is working and i especially marked two things here uh, it is important to recognize that these are different mechanisms for persuasion, but they are means to the same end. Examples of such mechanisms are good analysis, good rebuttal, and two crucial parts. Good strategic decision, common mistake, your engagement will other team, it's rebutting your own case as well. And, and follow up to this, I think sometimes when people are building the case, they are so focused on 
separating your own material from rebutting other teams when you are coming in the second speech, that you are not looking for consistency, right? Because if you are saying in rebuttal that some things doesn't happen because people will not completely change their behavior based on this particular based on this particular phenomenon or based on the things which you're describing in the motion. But at the same time, your case is contingent that a lot of people will react on particular thing. It's extremely decreasing the plausibility and persuasive of your case because it's unclear, right? Why when opposition is trying to perceive harms, but why this apply to bring your benefits, right? Therefore, I think strategy, it's something which on the prep time, you need to think of the debate as a whole picture, not about case by case. And also you need to think what will be the potential response in comparison to your argument, which you deliver in the debate, how people will attack you and how you can respond for particular attack to not undermine your case. Second issue, uh, using examples. And that was my case with my words partner. So uh, I'm horrible in IR. Like I literally have lack of knowledge. Like I know basic things, but every time when we did outruns in the semifinal, we end up OG and we end up in IR motion. And it's a, it's a huge struggle, right? Even if you are like DPM, even if you need to rebut, it's problematic. Therefore, you need to get some kind of intuition pump which help you to assess the knowledge necessarily to debate this motion, which doesn't require you to study Israel history or like history of uh, Afghanistan or Iraq, right? Therefore, you need to use, ex use examples on prep time to find a way, especially when one of you have this knowledge, right? To find a way how you can understand this case based on like other examples. So for example, if you are from the same country and you are talking about certain process, just gave some kind of intuition pump, firstly to your partner and then to judges, right? Because we are judging from the average citizen perspective, right? So you don't know all of the direct and all of the detailed issues, but you based on certain mechanisms and, and certain general things which, which affecting people right? Therefore, um, I think this is very helpful for people to try to establish the debate and put that on the ground and find some kind of reference point which already happened and which might help you to convince people. Okay, now, um, do you have any questions to the judging manual section, how to understand this uh, and how to, how to perceive? You can write on the chat, uh, that's fine. Uh, if not, I will just uh, move forward. So that's the few things which are important to all types of motion. Okay, we have a question. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Thank you. Um, so proportionality, right? This is very true to the policy motion, but also to every motion when you try to prove things and when you try to win on is the biggest one, or we will bring the we will apply to the vulnerable group of people. You need to remember that you can't make a soft policy. You can't risky because you are afraid that op will attack you, and at the same. Uh, I think I need to take my camera down because I have some unstable connection, but I think uh, if you can't hear me, just text me on Facebook or here, um, I will try to put uh, data. You need to involve the proportionate mechanism to achieve your impacts. Therefore, the example is very easy, which I pick. If you have a motion to, to increase like corporate tax or to increase some kind of payment to implement something, you can say that you will make marginal change but you automatically collect so many, so much money or so much resources to, uh, to build thousands of schools, create universal healthcare. And at the same time, people will not feel that. Because then this is un unbelievable, right? How you can create magically so much resources and so much money, but at the same time, people will not feel that lost. 
therefore, I think you need to risk sometimes. I think you need to know that if this is such an important cause, if that's this, if you believe that the lot of things that you are trying to prove will be good for people and will be beneficiary, you can justify spending more or like taking from other sources, right? Especially if you want to create the message, if you want to change people's behavior, if you want to achieve the certain tipping point, right? When you want to convince people that they should do something else than they are doing on a regular basis and on a, uh, in their life, right? Second of all, I think you need to consider plausibility of your case, right? If I would say that tomorrow, all of the men will start respect women and gave them a lot of leadership position when they will be shouting light from their hands, this isn't very plausible, right? Because we know how people behave. We know how power structures exist. And we know that this is probably not likely to happen. So this case might show some kind of logic which people might follow, but it's contingent on a lot of different things which believe, which people have, and how people will react to certain action, right? Therefore, you that if you're describing something, the judge is or like the people in the room are capable to see the picture of your case, and they are likely to believe that if you will read that in the news, you will A, take that this is a real news, not the fake news, but B, that that will be the bigger scale than just one shaky example or, or like one best case scenario or worst case scenario, right? So you should look for like the general knowledge and like general understanding and try to depict this in real life. Thirdly, and this is also interesting, in a lot of debate are capable to say, yes, we have alternative, we can do this in, in especially on opposition side, or we are doing that in the status quo. But this is just word against word, right? You, you might have two options to pick and you need to decide which option is more beneficial or which, more, which option is better. But also sometimes the case it's stand in the vacuum, right? That need to be sure how, the, how, uh, how this is dealing with the other which exist around us. And also why on which metrics on which grounds this option should be the preferable one and why this is something which apply to like the better good than the potential alternative, even if it's viable, right? So I think this is also something which is worth to pay attention. Um, on this, I think it's something, uh, it's something very crucial and which happen uh, a lot of times. People, when thinking and ask when we're thinking about cases, we are jumping directly into impacts and why the things which happen will be good or bad, but not necessarily proving why this is likely to happen and why you expect people to behave in that particular way. If premise is not there for, it's really hard to believe in impact and outcomes. So um, I will use here the example from um, uh, the motion, this house support the uh, uh, existence of teleportation, right? Which is accessible for everyone, etc. So op run the case that uh, if uh, if that things occur, then the governments will be using that in a very negative way. They will limit this freedom completely, but also they will make other things more expensive, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like a lot of assertion are necessarily to buy this case, right? A, why the government or state will have the negative incentive, that is probable to prove, but th that can't be only assert, right? Why they will weaponize that in this particular way, not doing, not prioritize other way, right? Or also, um, in, in uh, another example, when you have the most that the, this world in which starting from tomorrow women will sh were shooting the light from their hands case is that they will get the leadership position and they will be very powerful and then you will stop discrimination and stop the power structures but like why the people will react in that way right it's so many options how i can react when i see this i can lock these people down i can try to shoot them first i can i don't know hide their hands uh, I can, um, like, so many options. Why I should believe 
that this impact and this particular behavior is the right one. Therefore, in some emotions, I think it's, it's necessarily to spend enough time to prove why the things will, uh, why the things will happen and then draw some uh, outcomes of, of the case, right? Uh, this is also something which uh, one of my friends told me after I lost <laughs> a debate and was really angry. And he asked me, but did you prove uh, and spend enough time to say that your things will happen and then draw to impact? And I was like, yeah, not necessarily. I just assert that this is true. And I just assert that I have a fiat to say. So I think it's important to be sure that uh, that people will react in a particular way. And even if you forgot about this, even if you will focus on different situation on prep, when opposition is pointing out that this is not likely to happen, you need to consider what is their alternative, what is probably to happen and compare this while still some kind of incentive or still some kind of mechanisms are going into your favor, right? Uh, moving forward. Oh, and this is something which is uh, very interesting. A lot of people, when they're under the stress or, when I, or when I'm really tired, or in general, when you are in the rush or when you don't feel confident in emotion, don't read motion fully, but are just focused on some quotes of this or, um, or just linked to, to, to other situation, right? I lost three finals from OG because I didn't read the motion and like literally I was completely out. You need to put attention to every quote there because you, even if you will, like even if OO didn't see this, you always risking that CO will came to the debate or like CG, whatever, closing half and point that out. I put a few examples from recent competitions, which I think are relevant to this. The first one is uh, this house prefer a world where starting tomorrow, women can shoot lighting from their fingertips. I think you, even if it's higher burden on Goth, you can't just debate this motion as this house believes that women should have a right to shoot lighting. Why it's the case? Because A, the world tomorrow is completely changing, but also people will probably react to this and you need to consider potential response and how you will respond, how people will react, how this change the situation, because then you need to consider also certain acts, right? Probably if they can shoot lighting and if you spend five minutes on, on analysis, that they are so angry, that they are so pissed, that they are so differentiated in their life, that they are men are using the patriarchal house structure, that they are raped on a daily basis, et cetera, et cetera, like just drawing a bunch of examples. And then you can say, it, and the change will happen. People on up will say, but look, if these women are so angry, if they have so many reasons, the collateral damage is likely to happen, right? Because you require their anger, you require their reaction to achieve your outcomes for people to feel fear or something. And you can't just ignore the potential reaction. You can, you can respond to this, that this is still worth to do this, that probably the reaction will be not that bloody, that probably the reaction will be controlled or limited, but you need to analyze that, right? And that's the issue. And that's the reason why a lot of cases are hard to buy on, or well, when people are receiving speaker points below 75 or 78, because this is a logical gap. Right, it's hard to see why that will follow your and convince us that this is probably the, the most likely way to do this. Right, second idea this house is someone with hyper empathy, uh, would not use the pill, which will like reduce or like completely decline this hyper empathy. The issue is that in this motion you are different type of person in the beginning. Probably a lot of things which uh, Western people or like liberal values or like liberty or like definition of happiness are not applied to you because you never were like average citizen. You always create your beliefs. You always create your interest with the hyper empathy, which was internal part of yourself. Then for you can't just assert what will have life or like 
what is the potential, but you need to describe the scenario, how people interacting with this, how they create their values, what might change, what is the risk, right? And I think this is like telling someone the story and you need to be sure that these people have more uh, responses from you than they have creating another questions. Because every time when person wants to give you the question, therefore your case it's less likely to happen because you already have first doubt. If you have three questions under the one mechanism, it's really hard to see why we still believe that the things will happen in the end, even if your impact will be the biggest in the universe or in the debate. Third example is this house would allow children to sue their parents for religious indoctrination. This is not the motion when you can easily win by saying why children should have some power to, to say no to their parents or some kind of retribution or why they are legitimate to, to react. You have particular reaction which needs to be delivered and which need to be explained in the motion, right? Because if you explain that there are other ways, op can say, yeah, but we don't need to sue them. And we can prove to you why we have like the counter idea or counter prop, which is more feasible and don't necessarily need to go to court or don't need to go to the legal path. Therefore, you need to be specific to the motion and to the mechanism which is required for you to do, because this is the expectation what you need to fill uh, to be persuasive, to convince people towards your idea. Another, it's this house would actively encourage women to not have children. Again, if you want to achieve the impact, if you perceive the problem that we have overpopulation, that we don't have resources, whatever you describe, you need to use proportionate measure and you need to be focused on actively encouraged. That can't be just like putting into books, probably, or that can't be only like, oh, you see the banner when you are going to the school, which is, or like to your work, not have children, right? So you need to think, what is required for these women to don't want to have children and what kind of active measure you should you should use to to this or this house would subsidize art that glorifies the working class and i know that in many cases people in the debating sector we can do this but here the mechanism it's rely on, on particular spend and on particular fundings, right? It's not necessarily requires you only to say that um, working class is good or art about working class is good, but you need to particularly glorify this, which also need to explain what you mean by glorify, how the other narratives function, which means that you need to place this debate in particular context, but link that still to subsidies not just to like blank support or just like showing, saying, yeah, I'm in favor. That requires you particular action. Other example, uh, it's another phrase which people sometimes missing in the debate. This house regrets the glamorization of startup culture that encourages people to start their own companies rather than pursue traditional career path. Here in this debate, you don't have like obligation to create the counterfactual, which is like whatever you prefer, but you have a clear comparative to make, right? I think this is important to know what you need to compare in the end and what judges need to compare what is described in the motion. Therefore, this is probably not the typical regrets debate, which you see with other motion, like this house regrets the rise of startup culture, but that also show you to, to which phenomenon you need to compare the thing, right? Another one is this house believes that the creation of feminist icon and their cults of personality are good for the feminist movement. Therefore, you need to be sure for who are this is good, how you describe the feminist movement, who is involved, to which extent, how people it's likely to look for this, right? Because this is the specific specificity of the motion that you don't necessarily need to explain why the creation of feminist icon and their cults is good for women or like it's good for everyone, but you have a specific group of people to which you should refer. And that's why I think every time when you read the motion, it's important to, to, to look for, for the words which, which are changing 
even if you saw the motion two months ago, four months ago, even if word, one word is changed, this is not the same motion and you should not repeat the same case, but be sure that you are specific. Another one is this house regrets mainstream commercial films that depict history and subjugation and or crimes against humanity. What is crucial, you don't need to regret every piece of material. You don't need to regret the documents. You don't need to regret any memory keeper. You need to regret mainstream and commercial films. And this is also crucial for opting to not going to extreme and to not push additional burden, but also not to like constantly repeat your burden. It's only mainstream or like this is something which should be connected and linked to your analysis and should be obvious for people after you deliver your case, right? Also to, to know what you need to defend and what you don't need to defend in particular motion. Um, is there any questions to this part? Yeah, I really don't like talking to myself, but I hope it's fine. Um, yeah, let's move forward. So uh, here is the thing. Uh, this is not something which I wrote personally. This is something which CAs put to the manuals for speakers or to the types of motions. But I think people usually didn't read that carefully because people like to have like short information. People like to have PowerPoints and people pretend to listen to briefings, but there it's usually, you know, a cigarette break, then you want to go to coffee, then you're seeing your friends, which you didn't saw for a long time, or you're just scrolling your phone, newsfeed, or like checking memes on groups. But there are things which are necessarily for you to know what you need to do to win particular motion, right? So also useful tips, what you shouldn't do, and clarity rules to follow for judges what they should uh, do and assess in particular motion, right? So I will read this out. Uh, motions of the form this house would do X involve argu government arguing that they should be enacting policy X. A policy is a concrete course of action that government teams with to convince the judges should be implemented. Such motions are about whether the house should do X with government teams arguing that they should and opposition teams arguing they should not. For the purposes of the debate, the government teams are the government and the politicians that make it up. You know, the drill, you can read this. But here it's the point about the fiat, right? You have a fiat to say that that will be implemented and that will pass. But you have no fiat how people will react to this. What will be the, part, the exact implementation of this, the message going with that? This is not obvious things. You need to explain, right? You need to show how you will sell this, why you are doing it. That might be done very well if you put the right words around this, but also that might be done in a stupid way, which we sometimes call it squirrel, or sometimes just people didn't find a lot of important terms. Therefore, of course, you are also need to explain how you will do this and how people react and why this reaction will be uh, the positive one and also why people will follow another behavior which is required by this policy to achieve the outcome in the end. For policy motions, opposition teams may choose to defend status quo or propose an alternative in the form of country prop. It is not necessarily for opposition team to present a country prop, thought it might be beneficial in some instances. And I underline something. Right? If presenting a country prop, opposition teams are granted the same amount of fiat power that government teams have, the debate should assume that whatever country prop opposition proposal will also be implemented and it will be clarified to tell, to argue that opposition's counter prop will never be passed. Or even if you have counter prop and you have a fiat to say that this will be done, you have the same requirement at golf teams, which is how your message will be received, why your message will be the more positive one, why it will be successful, ergo, why it's comparatively better than the other one, right? That, what does it mean?
Okay, uh, I hope you can hear me now. Uh, and uh, I changed connection since I'm not using camera. I just back to my uh, laptop. That's perfect. Let give me just a second uh, to share uh, to share screen. Um, okay, be fine. Second. Of course, if you have any questions, you can write it down. As always, I will try to respond. Uh, Okay, uh, I hope that will be also fine. Let me check. Uh, okay, um, I think we end up here. So, um, all of this means that if you are prepping and if you know that you will be running counter prop or if you will try to rebut the case by saying, look, we have alternatives and these alternatives, it's A, B, C, D, E. You need to be sure that your alternatives are A, the same achievable as Gov, or they are better accessible for other groups of people. So you need to compare both of this. The same is for Gov teams. When you are prepping, you need to know that probably if you have a problem existing, it's like at least two solutions, maybe five, maybe seven. So you need to find the ground why your solution, why your idea, it's probably it's the best to solve this particular issue, right? So you also can't just set this is idea and this idea is good, but why this is better than other things. So uh, here are the burdens and tips which I just listed in the presentation. I will of course share the link to presentation later. Um, not only reasoning why we should do this and why this is the right thing to do, but like we discussed earlier, the reaction for the particular thing, how how uh, um, how that will be sold, how that will be received, etc. Right? Even if in some motion you will prove that people deserve for certain right, if this is the motion which is policy motion, which requires you to prove the outcome of this because that will happen under this policy under this mechanism you need to consider the other things. You can't finish your point uh, in the middle and being like, yeah, but we did that, right? Uh, I already told about fiat, so this is just like a summary summary thing. Um, yeah, and like I said about proportionality, so this is also the summary post to remind you what I said and maybe some kind of clarity if I was messy. Um, I especially underline the tipping point of your case. So in many situations, when you try to incentivize people behavior and you want to say, yes, and now people will be more incentivized to go to university, or now the parents will be more incentivized to take care about their children, or now the state sh should be more incentivized to do something. I think the question is why they didn't do that in the first place and why they will do that under this motion, right? You need to explain what was the incentive and the motivation or priority of the particular actor of the particular entity in the first place, and where is the tipping point, why they will be persuaded to change their actions, change their behavior under your mechanism, right? So this is crucial also to explain why a lot of your impacts will happen and to measure the size, how many people will react to this, how they assess information, etc. right? why people will follow this model. So examples of these motions, uh, which are also including a lot of useful tips, which I established earlier, especially on the proportionality. This house would impose gender and racial quotas in government cabinets. This house uh, would hold government officials criminally responsible for severe harm to citizens resulting from grossly neg negligent public policy. This house would pay additional benefits to families on welfare according to their child's performance in school. 
this house would require that government ministers will be a uh, highly qualified and experienced expert in their policy policy areas so for example uh, in the third motion you can't say that this additional benefit will be once per year and that will be 100 dollars right because then how that change or also why people will will do something differently or if you want to say that these people deserve for this or this is like something to do why this is accurate beneficiary why this is a accurate salary for for this particular thing if you say that this is so important if you say that they deserve right or also when you say that this house would require government ministers to be highly qualified you can say that this qualification will be very easy to get like internet course for like three months to not limit it like a poor people to get educational opportunities because then this highly qualified it's not reflecting what you want to achieve and what is like the, the crucial part for you to achieve your benefits or what should be required for you to achieve these benefits right so you need to be smart and strategic in the policy motions and you need to came to that in the prep because i can guarantee you if you don't think about these issues if you don't try to measure this will be first minute will be ring and it will be coo clarification or written in the chat right and then when you are getting poi you have like i don't know five seconds to respond and you're responding immediately for which things which are intuitive for you or which you believe in the particular moment are good for your case but that might be good for your case in the next minute but that might be not good for your case in the next two minutes or that might be not good for your rebuttal to case of the other side right that's why the proportionality strategy of the case it's extremely important to discuss on prep how you seeing this and how that will play out longer you can't just be prepared for the attack from one team or the, the most obvious line which will came out but you need to try uh, to imagine how the whole debate will, will look like right um analysis motion uh I will not read the slides, especially because you can see them here and also I will post this. So I will just focus on the underlining points. Government teams do not need to have a policy. They should, however, still define terms within the debate. In the case, they should provide a metric for how more harm than good should be determined. But this applying to so many motions, uh, happiness, freedom, self-defense, um, enjoyment, fulfillment, uh, increasing the situation on job market, more mobility, better education, better knowledge. I think all of us can understand all of these points in a different way, right? If you didn't define what do you mean by that, you're leading people with, re with going to their instinct, to their intuition, but also to using the the things which uh, which not necessarily are reflecting what was your idea behind the case but what they think is the most intuitive one or what it's for them the easiest one to buy right therefore you need to define this and you can't do this in a second speech in the end in responses to the opposition but you need to be sure on prep about what you are talking about and then you need to assess and you need to be sure that you are following the particular narrative um examples uh this house believes that prominent civil society activists should choose not to run for elected office i think that requires you to some extent to explain what do you mean by prominent civil society activists where you are prominent and when you are not prominent especially when people can discuss it in the motion but i think that's not the the most obvious example but i think the, this house believes that liberal media organizations should actively glorify democratic candidates of color active glorification requires from you to explain what do you mean by that and how that will be realized in the particular context in which you want to use this and in which the liberal media organization will will be functioned right but also this house believes that the environmental movement should adopt the message of eco optimism rather than pessimism this is something which Hadar covered in her narrative uh, debates uh, workshop so um 
I think if you want to listen more directly about this, that's definitely a good recommendation. But it's obvious that you need to explain to people what it's eco-optimism, how you can sell this message, how you can adopt this message, how people will understand this, how you can use existing things to, to, to prove this, or also what is the pessimism and how this will function and what is the comparison, right? So that's also things which you need to effectively discuss or at least consider. Uh, motions that uh, open the line is how support opposed. Uh, and here it's, uh, here it's also the thing. Probably you have many ways to support particular idea or to oppose to particular idea, but you have some kind of phrase in the motion which you need to def define and we need to explain. Again, you need to show why why the statement is different or like on which ground is different than other things which uh, which people are uh, delivering in other places, right? I think that it's quite clear. I don't want to repeat myself uh, based on previous words. Um, idealization of parenthood, support Asian NATO, oppose the dominant social norm in favor of monogamy. Um, this house supports countries withdrawing or academic tracking. And here is the case. Do you see the third motion, right? This house opposed the dominant social norm in favor of monogamy. And usually people are like neither uh, responding or um, creating the case by saying other norms also existing and they will be not go to extreme. That requires you to think how your norm, how this dominant norm is interacting with other norms, right? In which situation the tipping point will happen where, where you are capable to mitigate potential the negative outcomes, but also how many people will follow this, this narrative or this norm, right? I think this is also something to consider, especially in that types of motions. Um, here is, I, I think, one of the hardest type of motion to debate, which is problematic and easy to um, easy to make a mistake. Um, you need to create the world in which some kind of phenomenon will be the dominant, or which something which not existing will actually happen. And you need to try to assume how people will change, how people will react, and why this is some kind of better situation. Oppositions should prepare and be based on why the status quo have some kind of inherent values, or also why you create potential risk to, to, to particular instances in, and to particular issues. And sometimes people just jumping into, oh, that will be amazing, that will happen. This is the effect of this and, and people will be happy and then we'll have more money and then we will not go to jail and then people will follow the rules and then people will be good for society and then people will be like a lot of things which will happen. But not standing for a second and describing why that will be likely to happen because people will understand the message or change in this way. People will internalize this to their actions and that's how and that's how things will happen, right? If you read directly what it's here written, this is quite easy what you need to do. It's hard to do this if all four teams create something which is non-comparative or something which is put without regard to potential uh, to, to, to potential values or just based on my imagination when I am the artist and I'm creating the world, right? You need to always be sure that this is tackled and this is started by reality and trying to bring this, right? Example, um, this house prefer a world in which wealth is seen as shameful, this house prefer a world without organized religion, this house prefer a world where all romantic relations are consensually polyamorous. And I would like to talk about the first one, right? When you have the world in which wealth is seen as shameful, you need to decide and you need to be clear how many people will stop collecting wealth and why shame will be something which change their actions first, right? 
to, to show why you will have more redistribution, why you will have less prominent capital, why you have less wealthy people, etc. But also how this shameful will be realized and why people should care about that. If that will be the negative reaction uh, on the street, if that will be public shaming in media, if that will be, I don't know. So it's so many ideas how this shame might be perceived, but also all of your impacts will be re rely on, on the premise that people will react to this shame and this shame will change the way how people uh, are looking for jobs, etc. So it's important to explain this premise of the case and why that will be the tipping point for people to not accumulate more resources or not spending more resources but more important how you define wealth it's middle class standard wealth or it's ten dollars wealth it's one hundred dollars wealth it's one billion wealth to be clear that all of the people operate on the same standard and you are not left behind with a lot of attacks um here it's another slide again um uh, i still encourage you all to read the judging and speaking manual from major competitions which have a lot of useful tips for people how to prep cases what is expected from people to do but i just copy here the most important parts i hope you can read it i will not repeat the same things um here is the case um regrets motion um this is also something important and something which creates a lot of issues for people, right? You can only regret something which happened. And in that case, Gov to some extent know what was the phenomenon, what was the potential harms, or what was the description and depiction of things which happen. But Okay, um, I will respond to both of these questions uh, in a second, just finish this slide uh, to, to not get lost because that just show up on my chat. Um, so you know what's happened, you know how that's happened, but you don't know exactly how people will behave, how world will be looks like if this action um, will, will never happen, right? Therefore, you need to explain what is likely scenario, what will replace this particular event, or if not replace something, why will be better without this in any instance. And OP needs to defend why this is why this is something necessarily, or why that was good, or why that bring more benefits than harms. But you need to have clear counterfactual, and you need to know to which things you are comparing your things. If you will not think of as the debate as a whole, like what is the good things from this policy? What are the bad things of the policy? How I outweigh this? How I compare this? Which group I'm impacting? Then you have four different debates happen simultaneously and it's extremely hard to compare this uh, and extremely hard to find what this should be the metric between teams. Therefore, if you look for the regret motion, you need to be clear and you need to do as i said before characterization and the people need to see this need to see this uh, around them right okay uh moving forward responding to questions let me just read them if proportion doesn't address that opposition's counterprop takes more resources to be implemented can the judges as an average intelligent voter step in? Um, I think usually that doesn't determine the call. I think usually you have all of the other reasons based on like engagement between teams, based on if this is plausible to achieve or, uh, or if this is, uh, or how teams interact on the other cases, right? Because you are trying to not intervene as long as you don't need. And then you are seeing like both, both both ideas and both alternatives have different level 
of uh, implementation and different level of using resources. So if opposition, all of the case from op counter prop, all of their impacts rely on, on full implementation of their counter prop, then their case doesn't stand to the fullest extent, right? Because they have a lot of gaps. Because if I'm seeing that they need to use more resources than they have, then I'm not believing that they will do the idea which they are presenting in the round, right? Therefore, their impacts are less plausible. So even if proposition didn't address that, I'm already seeing the huge loop in the logic. The worst thing is if opposition, if proposition take that as granted and started to respond to this and only to the impacts of this and trying to compare or uh, to frame. So I think that depends on the specific case in the debate, but I think uh, if your argument and mechanisms hugely rely on, on using these more resources or something which is implausible, then probably opposition will be more harmed, even if proposition will not respond. But it's hard to say how that will play out without concrete debate, without full speeches, et cetera. But I think that's the that's the correct response. Uh, some of my trainees ask a question: How can you identify critical links in proving burdens during prep? How do you come with individual analytical steps to showing something is likely? So I think you need to check what is required for your impact to exist. So that's the the, the useful tip which I get from one of my friends. I ask how you prepping. And he said, so basically, I'm looking for golf, I'm looking for op. What is the best scenario and what is the required scenario for me to prove? And then I ask my partner how we will prove this. So I'm checking what is required for me to achieve this effect. Do I need to convince the older people to change their behavior, for example? Do I need to impact companies? Do I need to change the parents' perspective? Do I need to change the educational process? Do I need to change the money? So I'm thinking why people are not doing that in the first place, which is what is the incentive which is going towards people's minds, why they are doing certain behavior and why they are capable to change their decision or change their priorities and what I need to offer them or what is required to happen, right? Therefore, you're just making the psychological analysis of, of the people who or like the actors which you want to impact and you are checking when they are likely to react in the particular way which you want them to react, right? So that's how you came up with the analytical steps, which is what might happen that these people will not do this or what are the other factors which might influence them without the mechanism which I have in the motion and how I can make them, uh, how I can convince people that their perception will be likely towards my idea, right? So um, let's look for some of the example from the motion in critical links. Um, let's get back. Okay, so um, this house opposed the uh, idealization of parenthood, right? So you will have the people who, uh, who might be harmed by this particular idealization of parenthood, right? You might have women who should stay home because like based on their empathy, etc. but also like people needed to have children or something, right? So you need to think, a, why you are opposing this and why, what kind of action is required and also what are the priorities of these people? Are they doing this because this is expected in the society and because people are putting pressure on them? Or maybe they have internal feelings to have this because this is their fulfillment, because they feeling certain obligation or this is their source of happiness or maybe they are doing this 
because they need to have financial means or something, right? So you need to identify why people doing something in the status quo in the first place and then how they will start to act later, what is required to change their behavior. Uh, I hope that this responds to question. If I need to be more specific, please write on the chat uh, and I will address that in a second. Um, so here we have the examples to the regrets motion back to the track. Uh, this house regrets the narrative that glorify elderly. Um, this house regrets the use of the term moderate Muslim by Muslims to identify themselves. This house regrets the corporate sponsorship of LGBT pride parades. And if we address the motion uh, before how to find the critical links on PrEP, how to think about the cases and step, if you regret the use of the term moderate Muslim, but Muslim to identify themselves, they will need to identify themselves in other way, right? And they probably identify themselves as moderate based on certain events and being incentivized by particular reaction or by po particular political situation, right? So you need to check why they act the, the particular way, what were their options or what were their alternatives and why they didn't pick the best one and how the, what is required for you to, for example, make their better perception of the Muslim community uh, or, or achieve a lot of benefits, right? So you are going step by step based on the motivation of people, based on incentives of people, um, based on the current context, based on their decision which was made in the past, etc. Um, moving forward, um, another types of motion, it's about this house believes that X should. You can also read what is written here. This is also copied from the manual. And examples of this motion, right? This is quite intuitive based on all of the things which I said before and, uh, and outlined uh, with other examples. This I believe that companies should adopt the practice of radical transparency. You don't have specified big companies. You don't have specified pharmaceutical companies. You don't have specified Wall Street companies. So you need to look what it's common thing for all of the companies, which for example, is based on profit. Maybe it's some kind of corporate responsibility. You need to explain what is the priority and how, that, how this priority will be realized by implementing particular practice or also why that might be undermined. And you need to think also how that will function not a week after implementation. Not that the backlash will happen, like people will be surprised or that will be effective, but how in the long term this policy will play out, right? This is also something which is crucial, that the debates usually people are so focused to explain the moment of implementation certain idea or the moment when something happened that they don't look that that might stay longer, right? That that might be like two years, that that might be a norm after two months, that that might be something more prominent, more prevalent, and that everyone will be using this. And therefore, this is also something which needs to be addressed and referred, right? Um, actor motions. Uh, this house is A would do X or somewhat special. These motions are more specific about the entity doing X and so invite a closer examination of the perspective of the entity. When I was doing actor motions first time, I always think that I need to repeat and link everything and this is actor motion and this is why and 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 that's why all of the things are irrelevant because i am the pope or i am the church or i am the parent etc but like you necessarily need to spend significant amount of time in the first place to describe the person the interest the situation in this right if you have the average individual or if you have behind the veil of ignorance or whatever phrase, you need to refer to this. You can't create additional assumptions because then that makes your case weaker, right? Because then the case is not applying to general population, but, but applying the very specific circumstances and requires us to assert more premises, more premises to your case, right? So you need to think what it's likely to be priority for this particular entity 
and why this priority will impact the actions, where might be the obstacles or like what might be the other alternatives for that person. And necessarily, this is not about the general perspective. So for example, if the motion is phrased, this house supports the existence of teleportation, you can talk about wars, you can talk about the relation between states, you can talk about refugees, you can talk about a lot of things, right? About economy. But if the motion is this house as individual uh, or uh, this house's individual supports the existence of teleportation, you're probably talking from the perspective of one individual which will be using that, which have no connection to all of the atrocities, to all of the big economy, to macro macro sphere. Therefore, you are looking what it's that's changing in terms of the choice of the individual, what does it change in terms of personal relation, what you are likely to prioritize, and then the best thing for the whole world is less relevant in this particular debate, right? Again, and here I think it's a good moment to say this. A lot of people, and me including sometimes, when you are prepping, you are trying to automatically outframe some things. You are saying, in this debate, only principle matters, or in this debate, only practical outcomes matters. But probably the teams will disagree with you or you didn't know what will be persuasive for people in the end, as long as you didn't prove or didn't explain that in the comparative. Even if you try to outframe something, you need to explain why people shouldn't care about that and why they should care on the comparison on the other thing much more and provide some kind of information. Like I said, even if you provide some kind of information which will be unpersuasive for person or which will be not plausible and people didn't give you much credit, at least you know that they didn't buy your case and your, and, uh, and your speech and not that they didn't buy the idea behind your speech, which wasn't deliver, which wasn't sell, right? You need to be always sure that you control what people receiving from your notes, what people receiving from your prep, what people receiving from your brain when you're creating the speech. Therefore, if you assert that this actor has certain moral beliefs, and the moral beliefs of this actor are the priorities which outweigh the potential outcome actions, because this person, it's, for example, religious person, which believe only in salvation or like only for going to heaven, you need to explain this, right? You need to compare this person to the average person, or you need to compare this entity to the other things and sell this and say us why this is true and why, why this is the right implementation. Um, here are some uh, also crucial points from, uh, from the manual. I also encourage you to read neither in the presentation or neither in the manual and examples of actor motions. Um, this house is Japan would support closing all US military bases on Japanese territory. This house as the Catholic Church would publicly punish priests for clear deviation from its faith, doctrine and practices, which is also a good example of the motion to look that you have a word publicly there, that you have the word punish priests, that you have the word clear deviation, which means that you need to a little bit describe what do you mean by this and especially publicly punish because you have a lot of different interpretation. You can see this in a, a lot of different scenarios. So you need to A, say how you see this, B, why this is likely to happen because all of your impacts and all of your cases in the debate will rely on, on this particular mechanism. So you need to be sure that the mechanism is effective and that people understand what do you mean by by that. So summary, uh, this is a summary slide and I just collect everything what I said before, uh, which is A, uh, effective prep time need to fulfill expectations of CAs while setting a motion, which means that you need to read carefully wording. And analogy to this is uh, 
when you are in the company, when you have the board, which sets some kind of criteria which need to be fulfilled, they probably can't monitor you every day. So they are sending some kind of range of management managers, which are probably three or five people panel at Euros, right? And they need to check if you are doing the things which they write in the draft. If they have different conception what you what you done because they don't have full clarity of information because they need to based on their own subjective opinion because they need to ask questions to themselves they probably do that every one in a different way therefore you left them open for interpretation you left them open to understand how you fulfill certain expectations and certain criteria and assess your cases which is risky strategy second of all which is basically what I explained now. Uh, cover fields when might be interpreted in a different way by different people need to respond to open question, not create additional one and control your case delivery. So uh, I switched the order I explained before what I mean to the second point, sorry for this, but it's clear on the slide. Third, uh, effective prep time need to respond to the comparative can't be spent on creating cases in a vacuum. So we always need to know that probably the response is existing because that the motion should have a cases for both teams. You probably know that this is not the only way or if that's the only effective way or successful way, you need to spend some time to explain why that's the case. Fourthly, uh, you need to have clear strategy. You need to use proportional mechanisms to achieve impact and not contradict your own points while rebutting the other side which need to be think on prep. You need to consider how you will respond to other cases. You need to be uh, aware that the comparative exists. You need to be aware that attack to your case exists and you can't left yourself just to, to drawing during POI and respond whatever you think in the particular second it's beneficial or whatever can save you when you are standing uh, and people are waiting for your response, right? You need to have the consistent line of your case which you want to drive in the debate. Um, and fifthly, uh, sales strategy, which means you need to weaponize your rhetoric. You need to act to people's minds and understanding and convince them that this is something realistic and not necessarily the best case debate and scenario. Um, in terms of sales strategy, I recommend Noam workshop about PM when he's talking about what kind of words you might to use. And this is extremely helpful. In terms of weaponized rhetoric, I think Lucia and Tin deliver workshop in split, which was also really useful, uh, how to uh, make your case stronger or also how to keep attention, etc. cetera. Uh, in terms of putting cases in a realistic way and say and selling um, your material. I recommend Techway Workshop, which you can also find on YouTube. If you have any questions, uh, I will be here for like two minutes. Uh, if not, uh, that will be all. And you will find the link to the presentation uh, very soon. Um, okay, I'm not seeing uh, any other questions, so uh, that will be all, but you can always contact me on Facebook or uh, write under the uh, stream or something, then I will probably respond. No problem, no worries. Um, have fun, enjoy your day and good luck everyone.